Quake and the Cowboy, ACDC bringing us back. Jonathan Adams, Notre Dame basketball coach and, of course, former uh, Baylor school star and uh, Old Dominion monarch back in the day, played in the NCAA tournament. And you join us kind enough to come by and uh, join us again here on Sport Talk. What a weekend of basketball. Yeah, this like we were just talking about uh, you know, during the break, uh, this is about the best tournament I, I can remember. And, I've, and I pay attention to a lot of them, and it's uh, – this is this is about the best one for sure. The way Virginia comes and gets that, uh, you know, get the ball loose in the backcourt, the guard gets it, and and as you mentioned, instead of just chucking a three quarters or half court shot, he had the presence of mind to find the the post guy who had the presence of mind to just catch it around and shoot. I mean, I thought Purdue's winning; they're moving on because yeah. I was kind of pulling for him, and I'm like, what? I, I, you know, again, craziness at the end. It, and you know, like, like you just said, uh, you know, so many people would have panicked in that situation. I probably would have panicked in that situation. And for the kid to have that presence of mind to be able to do that, it, I think kind of reflects on on Coach Bennett and and you know, kind of his demeanor on the sideline. He's always calm, sure. Uh, and I think you know his team kind of takes on that personality. And and so you saw two very Heady plays in order to get the ball to the kid and the kid to catch it and shoot it all in one motion. It's, it was pretty impressive. Prior to, uh, you know, still in the Sweet 16 games on Friday, the dunk Zion Williamson had on the fast break on the two handed. I mean, his head was above the rim. That was just, I, I flew out of my chair. I was like, oh my yeah. God. I mean, the power he, that guy brings. He, uh, you know, I've never seen anybody quite like him. Uh, you know, I think probably most accurate comparison as far as the, the bounce is concerned was, was Sean Kemp. You know, when when he was uh, with Seattle, that's a great. Uh, I didn't think you know, about that, but I, that's a great comparison. You know, I think that you, they kind of remind me of each other. I think uh, Zion's more skilled, but you know, they they had that kind of bounce. But Zion has a dunk every game that you're just like, man, that only he can, I, only he can do that. Yeah, I wish I could do that kind of dunk. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's video game type stuff. So, what was your favorite game? I mean, I know it's splitting hairs because they were all were fantastic, but Auburn. What'd you think about Auburn, Kentucky? You know what I. That probably is my fa- was my favorite game because you know of the teams left in the tournament, they're my favorite team to watch, along with Carson Edwards uh, from Purdue. But um, you know the way how hard they play is just really impressive. It's almost uh, borderline out of control. It really is. It, it looks like organized chaos. It you does, know, I mean, yeah. uh, Bruce Pearl. I mean, he's working as hard as the players are. You see it in his shirts and stuff with all the sweat, <laughs> but. <laughs> You know, but you know it's really impressive how they've banded together, and and uh, you know, we we talked about that they couldn't stay hot, but yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they stay hot. There's been a lot of anti Bruce Pearl uh, rants out there. Um, just your your thoughts on that, because yeah, and uh, there was I was telling Quake there was a USA Today article, I, I believe it was USA Today, where um, basically they said he's what's wrong with college basketball today, and meaning you know he had the show clause and. Uh, he had some things uh, happen at the beginning of the year, and but he's still in it coaching. And I understand the thinking there, but it's also a good story too. It's a great story. I mean, the the man's won. He took you know Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin to the Sweet Sixteen, and then Tennessee to the Elite Eight, and now Auburn to the Final Four. Uh, you know, you can't tell me it's any worse than you know. Uh, Michigan State, Tom Izzo, with the scandal that they had at Michigan State, and then all of a sudden how he showed up his player and, you know, his players had to hold him back. And, you know, Rick Pitino was in the game. And, I, you know, if you're, if he's what's wrong with college basketball, then we got bigger problems than, than that. And, of course, Chuck Person was on his staff who's been, you know, uh, found guilty of, of – of- Directing players yeah. uh, through through the shoe company, so I mean, there's a lot to that. But it, it, it to me, maybe I'm giving parole pass. But to me, it's more about the sport, yeah. and the mentality of the sport, than it is one individual guy. Sure, there's some dirty guys, and yeah. and frankly, let's face it, it's college athletics. Yeah. There's a lot of dirtiness to it. Absolutely, and you know, one of the things that that you said that I think is the biggest key is those kids out there working their tail ends off, regardless of who the coach is. Um, you saw that with LSU when Will Wade was gone. LSU still played hard and, and got to a Sweet 16. And these guys are just fun to watch. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with Bruce Pearl as far as what I'm watching. Now, the, the way that they play, of course, and how they're playing, uh, you know, has to do a lot with him. But the kids, you could just see their character oozing through. You know when they you you know when you watch them play and how they love being together. And the injury to that Chuma Okiki, who arguably. 
and I'd say that Bryce Brown's the best player on that team, but yeah. it, arguably the best player, certainly the best post player. When he had that injury Friday night, oh, man, man, this has been fun, but yeah. the run's done. Yeah. For them to come back on Sunday, play without that guy, and then get this, a couple guys in foul trouble. I'm thinking the whole time I'm waiting on Kentucky. You know, they have so many great players yeah. on their team that just start to pull away, but they didn't. And Auburn just found a way to hang in there, hang in there, hang in there, and then they get the momentum in the end. And, you know, it's crazy because I was just thinking about on the way here the road that Auburn's had to take. You think about the, the teams they've had to beat. You know, you knock off two of the most storied programs in college basketball history in North Three, Carolina. Really? And, yeah, all, Kansas, yeah, Kansas, North Carolina, North Carolina, North Carolina Kentucky, and Kentucky. Back to back to back. I mean, how, how unbelievable is that? So, uh, you know, they, they have done it. You know the right way, despite what people may be saying about Bruce Pearl. The team has done it the the right way, and and they've been fun to watch. Yeah, they really have been. So Texas Tech, you know, this was a, a sleeper team for me. Just mm-hmm. like me too, man. I have to admit, under yeah, the radar, yeah, totally. Yeah. I was like, just, they're gonna get beat. Just like Houston, yeah. um, but Texas Tech, uh, they played a heck of a game against Gonzaga, and uh, I believe Tariq Owens, man, what a fun guy to watch play. Absolutely. He's he's uh, lengthy and. And he just he just puts it out there all on the court, man, and it's fun to watch. You know, and that and the way that they guard, you know, very similar to Virginia. You know, uh, with that game with Michigan State, it may be first to forty. You know, uh, <laughs> with how how both of those teams guard. I mean, you know, it's it's they have been uh, one of the top two or three defensive teams the past couple years, and it's been on full display this this tournament, and that's really what has gotten them there. They just, you know. Um, held Gonzaga to 70 points or 69 I think it was and Gonzaga's been averaging well over 80 so you know you guard somebody you give yourself a chance your uh takeaway from just the whole uh overall atmosphere I mean it just seemed like this and you mentioned it this 2019 NCAA basketball tournament has just had fantastic games after fantastic games I don't know how it can get any better. And I'm thinking television wants is thinking, man, if we could get Duke and Kentucky or Duke, North Carolina in that final game, I'm sure they don't – they wouldn't say this, but they don't want Texas Tech versus Virginia. They probably would rather have the Auburn story uh, versus Michigan State or, or whatever the case is. But uh, it could be, like you said, 42 to 40. Yeah, <laughs> if it's Texas Tech versus Virginia, it might be a boring final. But. It, you know, it kind of reminds me of when uh, UConn and Butler played in the finals. Uh, you know, a few years back. Okay, and, yeah. You know, that wasn't a very pretty game. It wasn't very fun to watch. And two teams. You know, UConn I know's been there, but Butler. You know, mid major. Uh, it, it was it was boring. It really was. And I think that the NCAA, you're right, uh, would uh, want to avoid that. But I think this tournament is kind of give you, giving you a glimpse of what it would be like. If the NCAA gets rid of the one and done, mm-hmm. I know that Duke, uh, you know, had a lot of freshmen. But you think about the rest of the teams in the in the Final Four, they're old, they're old guys, yeah. and and it's kind of a throwback to you know uh, when they had the got rid of the one and done and kids that could go out of high school could go, but everybody else was pretty much committed to college for two years or so. So, you know, I think that kind of gives a glimpse of of what. You know the NCAA will be will look like as they transition from the one and done. Well, we mentioned that there's only two national championships that are that are won by quote unquote one and done schools, and that's Kentucky and and Duke. So it 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 it, it happens more rarely than you would assume. Thinking, okay, we're going to sign three five stars and another couple of four stars, and we're going to go out there and take our chances. Well, the chances haven't been good. Not at all, and you know, but. I think the NCAA just needs to really pay attention to it. Number one, if a high school kid's good enough, he should be able to go. But number two, uh, what are the product looks like when you do have older teams, and it, it makes it makes for the best NCAA tournament that we've had in a, in a very long time. How, what kind of uh, lump in the NCAA's throat would it be to have Auburn there and uh, them seeing uh, the redemption story, Bruce Pearl, the redemption story on CBS? Because they've had their issues with Bruce Pearl in the past, right. they they don't they don't want that. Well, and like you mentioned, Jonathan, and what if it's against Michigan State and you've got the Larry Nasser yeah. ugliness oh, that's, that's too, happened? For, oh, I mean, can you? I mean, those two storylines too would would and some people who are haters are yeah. going to bring that out, and it's going to be the black eye of yeah. all time. But I mean, from a basketball standpoint, I think that's my that's my dream matchup. From, from a basketball standpoint, standpoint, I think that would be the best game possible. Uh, I think you're right. I think that, you know, if those two teams do make it, we won't be thinking about those things. But like you said, CBS and, you know, the national media will definitely be trying, you know, uh, want those to dominate the headlines uh, instead of, 
you know, focusing on the players that are there now, the work that they've put in, the, mm. the you know, the sacrifices that they've made and how, you know, and what of accomplishment these schools have, have done. Auburn, first ever. Texas Tech, first ever. Virginia, first time since 1984. You know. Ralph uh, Sampson. And then, you know, Michigan State, it's been a while. You know, and so, it, it you know, that's the storyline to me and, and the way that the players have been playing, not necessarily what – the adults that have nothing to do with those kids. Sure, and Joe, you, you mentioned know, it as a redemption story. It should be thought of in that light as opposed to scandal. And, oh, yeah, let's, you know. let's go back and take a look at what Bruce Pearl's done wrong. Um, well, let's, let's say you're, you're, there's a pickup game, wherever it is, right, and you have all the players available uh, from the teams that are in the Final Four. Who are you going to pick first? That's a good, You know, I like DeAndre Hunter. I think that he is uh, – you know, the most versatile of all of them. Uh, he's 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, you know, he can step out and shoot it. He's load inside, very athletic. Uh, I think just with the way that Virginia plays, he's not uh, asked to do what he, I think he really could do and what he'll be able to do in the NBA. He'd have a different game if he yeah, were playing I, on I, Auburn. Right. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. He, You know, he would be uh, – he would fit right in with that system, right? So, you know, I think that he's the best player, um, but I think that – you know Bryce Brown or, or you know one of those guys from Auburn or, or I like the know, Harper kid. Harper, the Harper yeah. Harper is is he reminds me of kind of that Kimball Walker run. You know, speaking of the sure, UConn, he, sure. he getting hot at the right times, toughness, uh, willing his team you know to victory, and and so he, um, you know, he would be hard to go against as well. Harper and Brown combo is well, obviously <laughs> lights out. It's tough, and then all of a sudden you got four and five men hitting threes, and you know when they hit, hit the the center hit the. <laughs> yeah. Banked it in. I said, "Well, yeah, it's it's over now." <laughs> you know, but so it was. You know, it they're they're like we talked about the last time I was here. They're as dangerous of a team as anybody. And uh, the guard from Michigan State, Cassius um, Winston. Winston, yeah. that guy, he's strong too. I'm telling, you, he's a he's a he's going to be playing in the Y when he's 45 and giving a lot of buckets. <laughs> I mean, they, that's how he plays. I mean, he plays old man. He's not explosive as far as you know uh, quickness goes, but. Like you said, he's strong. He's smart. The vision you to know, see stuff open up before it it's, does. It's unbelievable. And you know he's an extension of, of Izzo and knows it in and out. If you notice, they never say anything to him. He already kind of – he's like, I got it, coach, and they move on. So, he, uh, you know, he's he's been very impressive. So, of course, you'll be back on Friday, Absolutely. and we look forward to that. But uh, early thoughts, especially on the Virginia, a five-point favor over Auburn. I thought, wow. I mean, if they get into an Auburn-style game – which I think Virginia is going to try desperately not to do that. But, heck, they they scored, what, 80 points when they won, so it wasn't like their typical 52-50 to 50 type game. But Auburn gets them in a running game, and, boy, I, I like Auburn plus the five. Yeah, I, if if I was putting a bet on that, I would definitely take the points. I, I can't see, uh, you, know, Virgin, you know, Virginia plus five in that. That's going to be very similar to the couple games that we've had uh, these last few games. And, I, you know, honestly, with how – Auburn is playing right now. Even though I have Virginia picked in my bracket, you know, I, it, it's hard to bet against Auburn right now. It really is. So you got just Virginia left? I, you know, I actually have Texas Tech as well. Oh, nice. I, I He's do. one of the guys. I, 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 yeah, I did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, said- now I also had Duke, and, and my other uh, side was Duke and Kentucky, but so that, that – Flamed out, but they, they had. They said that eight thousand people had these four teams in their final four after seventeen plus million brackets. I'm like, there's no way there's that no many way. people had these four. <laughs> no way, no way. Oh, yeah, I, unless they're from one of those schools. Yeah, just exactly. Happened, you know, Jonathan, always appreciate your time. Look Thank forward you so to seeing much. you back on Friday, and uh, we'll get a preview of uh, Saturday's action. The final four is here. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys.